God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us, who have been baptised into Christ, to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. From Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 18 to 20. So, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them by shutting up John in prison. They were all the same in that part of the family, pathetically weak. Why did I ever imagine that marrying my first husband's half-brother would be an improvement? I hoped that half might make all the difference. Wrong. I was a granddaughter of Herod the Great, of course. He was more old school. Mm, so was I, although being a woman was a little limiting. He had my father executed when I was just tiny, and I wasn't above removing my enemies if I had to. It's no use being a doormat. Divorcing, well, was unusual, especially for a member of the royal household, never mind a female one. It gave me a degree of notoriety. But if you are not happy, why, why shouldn't you just opt out? And after all, my new husband, Herod Antipas, had divorced, so why should I not? There were rumours about us. People love to talk. The more salacious, the better. We are more enlightened, more Greek than most of our fellow countrymen, and in with the Romans. We are not so popular with the bona fide Jews. Oh, too bad. They might think we were guilty. But me? I couldn't possibly comment. Now, what happened with dippy religious Megamouth illustrates perfectly what Mr. Herodias Mark II is like. This John chappy appears out of nowhere from some little town in the Judean hills, H's spies reckoned. His father, Zechariah, was a priest, nothing special, just doing temple duties like all the others, taking their annual turn on the rota. But the son, he was, curiously, a legend in his own picnic lunchtime. Seems he was trying to resurrect the lost role of the ancient prophets. We haven't had that kind of troublemaker here for donkey's years. But his focus, his focus was similar. Repent, you brood of vipers, change your ways, make a fresh start, because someone greater is coming, and I'm not fit even to tie his shoelaces. Something like that, I think. He presumed to speak for God, quoting the book of Leviticus to say our marriage was incestuous. And I, I could not be H's queen in law, not ever. Who did he think he was? He'd camped out in no man's land along the Jordan Valley to ply his peculiar trade. Various people reckoned he was acting out that bit in the prophet about a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Clever that. And maybe, maybe why people went to gawp. 
Oh, he was as rough as a jackal's armpit, dreadlogs, scratchy camel hair, clobber accessorised with a raw hide belt, hardly a fashion icon, thin as a rake, through foraging for food out there. Yuck! Locust and wild honey diet, people said. And yet, and yet. There must have been something. Because he struck a chord, not just with the marginal. Soldiers and tax collectors of middle class and professional types. Mm, they might not quite fancy a ritual river dunking to symbolise their new beginning. But they did like to hear him. Do the Q&A. Where were they going wrong? Just in case of God was involved. Johnny had quite a following, but still he claimed someone bigger was coming. That was worrying. Any sort of delusional rabble-rouser might claim they were the promised messiah. Any trouble and our Italian friends could knock this whole Herodian house of cards flat. We needed to shut him up and quickly. But H, H was enthralled. If the bigwigs hadn't got cu curious, well then H would probably never have gone so far outside the city, but then he came back and said John Boy was sounding off about us, among other things. I offered a word of advice. Political battering ram. H finally arrested him, but he loved to party, the old man. Plenty of drink, feasting, cabaret, and I figured his birthday would be the perfect opportunity. My daughter, Salome, was a cracking belly dancer. A few gyrations in a scanty costume, and H would promise her anything. Too predictable. Bingo. She, she was mighty pleased with the offer of half his kingdom. Oh, half of nothing. But I told her, John the Dipper's head on a platter, pronto. It was not a pretty sight. But if he was God's mouthpiece, would it have been that easy to stop? So, you upstairs, who is queen in law now? The last and greatest of the prophets was how Jesus himself referred to John the Baptist, whose work paved the way for his own public ministry. Even he had gone out to the Jordan Valley to be baptised right at the beginning. Not to wash away his errors or make a fresh start though. No, instead he was endorsing John's work and identifying with those taking the plunge. He was, after all, only human too, struggling to do God's very demanding will. Herodias was a symptom of Israel's corruption. Jewish by race, she had nonetheless bought into the secular culture of colonial superpowers, intent on shoring up the puppet kingdom of her family on their former territory. She attempted to maintain the precarious status quo. Even local historians painted her as quite the schemer, although her husband's family were far from innocent themselves. When her machinations offended the Emperor Gaius, commonly called Caligula, the couple were finally exiled to far-off Europe. But for now, Herod's queen-in-law was still too late.
to silence the word of the Lord, ringing out bravely and unnervingly along the Jordan Valley. John had shunned polite and unscrupulous society to call God's people back to him, to prepare for a new initiative which would change everything forever. From his prison cell, John sent a message to ask Jesus if he was the one or must they wait for someone else. Jesus sent this reply, go and tell John, blind people see again, lame people walk, lepers are made better, deaf people are hearing, dead people are alive again and the despairing are receiving good news. Herodias might have the will and the influence to end his earthly life, but John could die a happy man. His message had been authentic. His words were fulfilled. And the power behind the throne? Well, in truth, she was nobody's queen. <laughs>